In this video, we're going to learn about the mirror modifier in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to talk about the mirror modifier in Blender and also making sure that we understand the order of operations in our modifier stack. For this example, you don't have to follow along, but in the last video, if you created your own hood and fender shape, this will be a great example because it goes over the Y plane. You can see here that I've got geometry that sort of crosses that Y axis or that YZ plane. So we're gonna do a few things here. First, I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna use GX, and I'm gonna pull it until it's on the other side of Y, so you can see that there's a gap here. And then I've got one that overlaps it, and we're gonna work on that as well. I'm gonna go back to this one, and I'm just gonna hide it because I don't wanna show it. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna to go to my modifier stack, and I'm gonna create a mirror modifier. When I do this, at first, everything seems okay. It looks all right, but as we start to investigate, you can see there's a weird little line or division here. If we show our edges with the viewport shading option, you can see that the underlying mesh is actually going past that mirror line and it's sort of blending these together. If we turn off optimal display and we actually look at the subdivisions we created, we can start to see part of the problem. What actually happened here is we have a lot of these low poly faces that got subdivided and subdivided again, in this case, three times. So we have a lot of edges that have crossed that mirror line. If we turn on bisect, it tries to fix that, but you'll notice that we have multiple edges or multiple facets or faces that are combined together to create this sort of lip or this indention here. So if we show our surface, Right at the front, we're getting this weird artifact. So what we want to do in a case like this is we really want to think about what's happening in our modifier stack. So what we have here is we've got a subdivision surface, which we haven't applied, and then the mirror modifier after the fact. If we select our body and go into edit mode, you can see exactly what we have in terms of a low poly. If we go to a top view, you can see that we've got half of this set of faces across our mirror line or the mirror axis. What we want to do in this case is we want to make sure that that mirror option, that mirror modifier happens before our subdivision. So we're going to take the small dot icons in the upper right hand corner of our modifier and drag it up. When we do this, you'll notice that if we go back to object mode, everything looks nice and smooth and clean now. And if we turn off our optimal display and we go back to our edges, you can see that everything here is nice and clean. And the reason for this is because we have to think about what's happening in our modifier stack. When we have our modifier stack active, we want to mirror our low poly object. We want to allow it to bisect. And if we want to use clipping, we can do that. It really depends on our, our mesh and our object. But we want to make sure that that happens first before the subdivision. Now let's take a look at this object here. And once again, we're going to add that mirror modifier and you'll notice that the mirror modifier is not happening relative to the Y axis, but it's actually happening relative to the center of the object. So when we started our object, our initial face, we built this off of the cube. This was that center point, and this is what it's using for our mirror. So it doesn't matter that it's moved away from our Y axis. All it matters is where that original center point is. So the same thing is true. And we want to make sure that this happens before our subdivision surface. So the main thing I wanted to cover here is the fact that we need to be mindful of the order of operations inside of our subdivide. And in this case, our modifier stack in general, we want to make sure that we use some sort of workflow where we mirror our low poly object and then we subdivide it. But the great thing about Blender is we can reorder these things whenever we want to, and we can see what kind of effect it has. We don't have to apply these, but if we do apply a mirror modifier, then we go into tab, notice that we have the entire object. So if I were to grab a couple of these and I start moving them out, I no longer have that mirror or that symmetry. So I'm gonna use control Z till I bring that modifier back. And then if I go into tab mode and I start moving this, you can see that it moves both sides. 
So it's a good idea if you're planning on using this sort of symmetry that you keep it in the modifier stack while you're modeling. And then at some point, if you decide you want a left hand and a right hand to have small differences, then you can apply it and continue modeling however you want. You can apply the modifier, in this case mirror, no matter whether it's before or after the subdivision surface, just make sure that you do a quick check. Check to make sure that your mesh is okay and turn off optimal display to make sure there isn't any hiding problems. So at this point, that's really all I wanted to cover with the mirror modifier because I know that's a problem that starts to happen when people begin to use things like subdivision surfaces and then decide they wanna create a mirror after the fact. And it can be a real pain to try to figure out why you have a crease down the model. So that's as far as I'm gonna go with this. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.